How we doing? Welcome to Wasted Lunch. Perfect place to waste your lunch. I'm Paul McVeigh. And on a little bit late today, one of those days where life gets in the way. And so got postponed a little bit. Time is 12.32, oven standard. And whew, it's Wednesday. Wednesday, middle of the week here. Just about over the hump, huh? I guess that's what you'd say. Um, there's been a show that... Oh, Sean's watching. What up, Sean? What's happening, dude? Uh, watched a movie last night. Movie that I've uh, talked about before. I think, hell, I think just the other night watched it. Uh, or I think I, just the other night I talked about it. Um, and I realized... You know, I've criticized the movie, but I've never, I don't, I don't think I ever watched the whole movie. So I figured I'd give it a, um, an honest try. Sean says, got the leprechaun shirt on. Yeah, yeah, got the leprechaun uh, shirt on. But uh, Sean will be happy to hear that I actually watched the whole doggone um the Grinch movie, the live action one, okay, because I, you know, talked yesterday, last night, I think, even, where I was, you know, talking about how I couldn't stand live action uh, things or whatever, so I figured I'd give it an honest uh, try and watch a movie, I watch a whole movie, now, I'll say this, I was not converted into a um, live action what the hell do you call it? I, I, I was not converted into a major fan. Okay, I didn't go gaga over the movie, but I will say I gave it an honest try. But, uh, you know, it was a little bit interesting to see the sets and stuff created in a Dr. Seussian way. I will say that. But uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, shit my pants over it. We'll say, we'll put it that way. I didn't go crazy over it, but I did watch it, okay? But I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, but I figured Sean would like that especially. But uh, it was okay. I mean, the movie was all right. I just, I wasn't laughing. At, you know, I think I should have been laughing while watching the movie, but I wasn't laughing, okay? That's what was going on. I, I wasn't, you know chuckling and stuff like that. But. Now, today I'm on here, and it's it's weird. Uh, let's see. Sean asks, uh, your kids watch it with you? No, no, it's just me. What happened was I tried to go to bed at a decent time last night, and I lay there in bed for about half an hour, and it just, it wasn't, I was not going to go to sleep. So, I got out of bed, you know, like I said, I gave it a good half an hour or so trying to sleep, and then I decided, you know, this is bullshit. I'm not going to fall asleep. So, um, I decided I'd go into the living room and watch a movie. Earlier, my daughter was looking through the Netflix thing, and I saw that Grinch movie, and and uh, I remembered that. So, I'm like, you know, I, I've picked on the movie, but honestly, I've never watched a whole time. So I gave it a good, good uh, college try, watched the movie, and like I said, I wasn't, you know, uh, jumping out of my seat or, or belly laughing over it. But then again, you know, it, it doesn't help that I've been Jim Carried out, you know, the Jim Carrey kind of humor wore off a long time ago for me getting into that. His, his super crazy physical humor. Um, but uh, Sean says, did you find it somewhat enjoyable? Yeah, it was somewhat enjoyable. I just, I think I should have been laughing, you know, but I wasn't laughing. And, and you know, there were lots of gags in it that I just wasn't laughing at. And, and it probably does not help that I've been worn out on the whole Jim Carrey shtick. 
for ages, decades. Um, I, I've been over the Jim Carrey thing. Um, even when he first started getting hot, I mean, I saw some of his, I thought some of his stuff was funny way the hell back when, but it, it wore, it wore on me pretty damn quick. So that probably didn't help my viewing of the uh, Dr. Seuss movie. But I did find it interesting to see the, the cars they had made for the movie, you know, um, and everything, you know, the Susie style turned into sets. That was interesting to me, too. Uh, Sean says, my favorite Jim Carrey movie is Liar, Liar. I know I've seen the movie. Um, now, honestly, I, mean, I don't recall it very much, but... Alas, my memory has not been very hot lately. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I need to start taking some kind of uh, nutritional supplement. You know, some kind of supplement for memory health. They got shit like that, right? And that St. John's wart stuff supposed to help you remember shit better? I don't know. Some things I'd rather not remember, you know, but... Uh, It's weird today. I'm I'm on, and what I usually do is I use my phone to hop on here. Okay, and and I did that again today, but my app on my phone looked different today, and I had to go through a different kind of procedure to get on here live, and it's it's different. Okay, um, I get it has a number of people watching, but it doesn't. Usually what happens is in the corner of the screen, I've got you guys' pictures up there, okay? And whether or not you guys could possibly go on live with me is represented by a little camera next to your avatar. And I don't have that today. So it's, it's kind of strange to me. It's uncomfortable. But I'm still on, you know, I'm still on live. But yeah, so if I'm looking at if I'm looking at the camera kind of funky, it's because it's kind of funky for me right now. It's kind of a funky feeling, you know. But uh, yeah, liar, liar! I remember the Ace Ventura movies. Let's see. Uh, Sean says you'd probably rather not remember that day you kicked a cannonball or the day your parents found your magazines. Yeah. Yeah, I could pass on the cannonball one. I could pass on that one. I can handle the one where my parents found my stash of my stack of girly magazines. That's kind of funny. And the cannonball story, you know, I mean, uh, it was painful, but it it's, you know, the good thing about it is, the payoff is, is when I tell people about it, they usually get a pun intended kick out of it, you know. So, that's worth something. Don't get me wrong, I would, uh, I would not today say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to bash all the bones in my foot so I can have a fun punchline to tell people. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather not do that again, but, uh, so anyways, what's going on, what's, I just shifted my camera and everything around. You guys are going to get motion sickness. So what's uh, what's the big happenings today? Anyways, what's going on with you, Sean? How are you? Things are good. Going good in your neck of the woods. I you know uh, today one of the big exciting things for me is I've got one one strip. One strip of wallpaper to do. That's all I need to do to finish this damn room. That's all I got to do. I've needed to do that for a few days. But uh, Sean says that had to be embarrassing with everyone laughing at you. Probably never let you live that down. At least I wouldn't have. Um, no. And, and I'm a glutton for punishment because, you know, I go ahead and share that story with people who otherwise would have no idea that that shit happened. So, you know, I'm cool with that. 
John says, I'm fine just laying down. Yeah, living a life of leisure, I see. Well, I, I've, uh, I haven't had a chance to sit down for very long today. Been, been, you know, been doing a lot of driving around, doing errands today. But uh, that's, you know, not one of my favorite things to do, but it's, you know, got stuff I have to do. So that, that's how I ended up on here late. I had to go over to the school for a minute there. But everything is all right, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, I got one strip of wallpaper I got to put up. The problem is um, I've got to remove molding that's up. And I gotta be really doggone careful to remove it, how I remove it, so I don't mess it up. Let's see. Sean says, if I went live, you'd probably see that my eyes are barely open. What the hell did you do? Have an all-nighter? You up all night? Watching movies, playing video games? I don't even know if you get into playing video games, do you? That's something I, I think sometime I'm going to try and get back into playing more video games. I know that doesn't sound like a responsible thing to do, but I think, uh, I think it'd be good for me. My wife actually encourages me to play video games, for crying out loud. Because I used to play them, and uh, I haven't been playing them for a long time, for several months, and it's a good way to relax a little bit, you know. Never been obsessive with the damn things. John says, no, just haven't eaten yet. Oh, that's that's why you're tired, maybe low blood sugar there. Uh, no, I'm not much of a gamer. Okay. Yeah, I, like I said, I haven't, never been obsessive with the game thing, but I used to enjoy it quite a bit. I like shoot 'em up games and and race race car games were kind of what I tended. Well, no, I guess I also liked adventuring games. I like those Skyrim, Elder Scrolls or games too. So, but at one time I was oh my gosh I got carried away with that damn Gran Turismo game. I can't remember what number game it was. It was for the PS3. I was really into that. I was pretty damn good at that game. Um, never beat uh, whatever the big damn race was. The biggest, most uh, competitive race in the game. I never beat that. Never got a good placing in that. But I was pretty damn good at that game. That was a fun one. I got into that one pretty big time. But, uh, you know, gaming's not, it would never been anything to where... That's all I gave a shit about was playing a video game, you know, played video, you know, I never played video games and just ignored all the stuff going on around me that needed done, never got into gaming like that, um, you know, I've had more of a problem with that with books than I have with uh, video games, to be honest with you, I've had, I've had more trouble get carried away with reading than I have gaming because uh, you know if you're reading it if I'm reading a good book I just uh, try and look for every every available bit of empty time that I can cram some of that book in you know and that's that can be tough to do of course with the and then then when you're reading it so what would you say exclusionary is that I don't know hell I don't even know if that's a proper word but you know because I can't read when there's people talking around me I can't do that so I'll you know, sneak off to my bedroom and read my book cuts me off from everybody but I can't read with people talking around me I just never uh, I'm not good at tuning people out I'm not good at watching movies while people are trying to talk I, I can't stand that that's always bugged the hell out of me, too. So, And I think that's why I can't really get scared of horror movies, because I am so easily distracted by things going on with me. I can never get 
totally engrossed into them to where when there is what they call a jump scare to where it affects me. So, uh, you know, some people, it doesn't matter how damn old they are when they're watching a movie or something, they get so drawn into it, they have no idea what the hell is going on around them. You know, are you one of those people? I'm not. But, uh, the Sean says, I used to play those wrestling games a lot when I was younger. I remember on either my 8th or ninth birthday for the majority of the party, I was playing SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 with my Uncle Ryan. That sounds fun. That sounds like fun. Uh, you know, I played a little bit of the wrestling games. I was never any damn good at them. I was never good at the wrestling or fighting games. You know, the Mortal Kombat and the SmackDown vs. Raw, I was never good at them. I, I've always had fun with them. But I always preferred those wrestling games, you know, the modes where you can, like, grab a ladder or, or a crutch or something and hit somebody with, smack them with it. Always liked those ones. Always thought those were fun, where you could bring in foreign objects into the ring. Those were always fun. Uh, but I was never good at them. I wasn't. I played sports games, too, a little bit. I uh, never got into Madden uh, because just those plays and shit, I never had any idea what the hell all that squiggly drawing represented and stuff because I'm not into football. But uh, I played soccer, video games, winning 11. Um, what the hell else was the other one? EA makes one, too. FIFA. They make the FIFA games. Played those. Um, actually played Tiger Woods Golf. I got I got carried away with that one time. I got pretty in, pretty much heavy into that game. Um, so I've played sports games and, and hockey games. I played hockey games and enjoyed those too. Hell, I played a tennis game. I got that came with my 360. Uh, some top spin game. And that game, you know, I don't know shit about tennis. And I didn't know, I absolutely knew nothing about tennis when I got that game. But it was free. And the guy at the store told me, because I'm like, this comes with some tennis game. And I made a face, and the guy's like, it's actually pretty fun. And so, I figured out, hell, I'll give it a try. And it was fun. John says, I used to play golfing games when I was younger, too. I remember playing Wii Sports. Yeah, and honestly, I'll be honest about that. I've never, um, no, I've probably played a Wii game once or twice because I've never had a Wii system. So, so, uh, I didn't play with my Wii too much, but, uh, because I never had one. I don't have a Wii. But, uh, so I never really played those too much. You know, which that was a pretty good idea. Get people off their asses and doing something while they're playing a video game. And that's, I thought that was an interesting concept, but I never had the game system. And I know a lot of people really got into that. Hell, I know people got into that. <clears throat> when there's some Wii Fitness stuff, too. I know there were, there were some kind of games or something where people were like, I had a neighbor that was really into it. They were keeping track of their weight and all this stuff and losing weight playing these damn Wii games. So, you know, which is cool. That's cool. But, uh, yeah, never had that system. In fact, I don't think I've had a Nintendo the latest model of Nintendo system I ever owned was a Super Nintendo. That's it. Sean says, I also remember playing the Kinect. How, was the Kinect any good? I've seen that. You know, I've seen that on video game boxes plenty of times. Better with Kinect and that. Did that work pretty good? Because I never, I absolutely never touch out. I mean, at least the Wii Sports... You know, I played ping pong or something at somebody's house one time or some shit like that. But I never, ever played Connect. Did it work good? 
just wondering about that. Um, you know, I and I, I played live just for, oh gosh, I don't know, a couple months. I was on Xbox Live, which I had fun playing uh, one of the Call of Duty games. That was back when uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare was still popular. Sean says, I liked it. It was for the Xbox 360. Okay. So it was a hit with you. Um, yeah, I never had the Kinect. Um, I've actually had two different Xbox 360 systems. The one went kaput on me. The first one I ever had went kaput twice. Got that red ring of death thing. Oh my gosh, I was, I was really upset about that. Because um, I didn't have it too long before it croaked. And then I looked that stuff up online about what the hell happened to it. And, you know, I had to ship it out and then wait forever for it to come back. And and uh, that was that was the time when shipping wasn't as fast as it is now. You know, shipping nowadays is really damn quick. But it wasn't fast like that back when I had to ship out my 360. It took a long time to get stuff shipped. So, there's a lot of downtime, a lot of no gaming going on for me when I had to ship that out. And that happened twice. So, that's not a happy camper about that. Because, you know, back then, I mean, it was very expensive system. You know, it's still new. And that's a big deal for me to actually get a system when it's new, because I usually, uh, stay behind the times when it comes to video gaming. Uh, and I do that on purpose because it's cheaper, you know? So when they got some, what? I got some really new Xbox now, Xbox One something, or, you know, I'm not going to have that damn thing. If I ever do get it, it's going to be a long time before I get it. I just, I wait. I wait. You know, I, I'm, I wait till it's old and the price has dropped. Yeah, and then, then there's a bunch of games that are cheaper. And, and it's easy to do. Um, I can see, you know, some people have trouble with that. A lot of people who are like big time sports game fans who got to have the latest game. You know, those guys, you know, I, I mean, I look at them and I'm like these poor suckers, you know, because they want to have the newest damn Madden or whatever. Um, and so they pay top dollar for that shit. So, you know, when, when you only have a passing interest in sports. Oh, no. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Whew. Ended up being delayed again. Whew. Let's see. Somebody's still on here. I don't know if it's Sean or what. But, yeah, I ended up being, ended up getting a call, which interrupted it, and I had to take it. Let's see. Just got my elbow licked. That's weird. Uh, Sean says, I've had mine for eight to nine years, and it's never got the red ring of death. However, let's see what we got going on here. However, the disc holder won't come out unless you hit the top of the Xbox. If it already, if it has a disc already in it, it usually gives me no problem. We got that with our 360. We got the same damn thing. If you don't have a disc in it, it does not want to open. I don't, I don't know why the hell it works like that. I'm not, you know, I'm not a tech nerd, so I don't know why it does that, but ours has that too. It's like, you know, somebody takes a disc out and closes it. You're like, no, 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 don't, 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 don't. Oh. And then, you know, and you're screwed. And it's a big old pain in the ass. But, uh, so, yeah, we got the same problem going on with ours. But we just try and make sure that we've got a disc in the damn thing, you know. And... The old Xbox, the first one, the big black box, it, uh, you know, I had one of those that ended up giving me problems. It wouldn't spit discs out either. 
So that became a big ass problem. Which I'd like to get another one because I had so many damn games for it that I loved playing. Sean says he's back. Had to delay for his latest victim. Hence why Jonah has not been on. Paul turned him into chocolate. Yeah, I got chocolate covered Jonah bits all over the kitchen right now. All right, now my dog is whining, and she shouldn't be whining. She peed, she pooped, she did all that good stuff. I don't know what her problem is or if she's just attention starved. But, uh, no, I did not. I did not slay Jonah and turn him into candy. I didn't do that. Um, I don't know where Jonah is right now. But. Yeah, this is really weird, dude, because I don't... It's so strange um, not having your little avatar up there. Wait, and so you thought the delay was because of my victim? Yeah. Boy, I must have really killed him fast and went through the whole chocolate process. I'll tell you what, if you ever made homemade chocolates, you know, you'd know that it take a lot longer than that to turn somebody into chocolate-covered bits. Sean says she wants to go talk to her squirrel friends. You're probably right. Probably right. Oh, my gosh. She can't. She's so funny. She goes out there and barks at those trees, you know. She'd love to tear into one of those squirrels. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Huh? Um... Watched another go. Watched a couple good classic Christmas movies. Also, a couple other ones last night. Watched The Year Without a Santa Claus. Remember that one? Watch that baby last night. That was fun watching that one. And uh, Rudolph's Shiny New Year, which I don't like as much as The Year Without a Santa Claus. You know, um, but I still like it. Sean's, Sean's asking, does she ever just stay in your yard? Lately, no. Lately, Nala has not been listening. She's or not been staying in our yard if if we're not out there. You got to stay out there to actually keep her in the yard. If you're not out there, she will. She'll be you know off running around in the neighborhood, which. Uh, we get some money, and we're getting another zappy collar, you know, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to retrain her ass to stay in the yard because, you know, we don't want anything happening to her. Sean says, one of my favorites is Santa Claus is coming to town. Sean, I kid you not, out of all the stop motion uh, Christmas classics, Santa Claus is Coming to Town is my absolute favorite of all of those, hands down. Uh, I know a lot of people, their favorite, probably the most popular one overall of like those Rankin and Bass ones is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, you know, which I do like that. I, I love that one too, but Santa Claus is Coming to Town is, is, is my favorite. That is my top favorite one, you know, showing Santa Claus as a baby and him growing up with the elves and Tanta Kringle. And that's my favorite of all of those movies. Absolutely. That is my favorite one of all the stop motion ones. And so I'm going to have to dig that out. Don't know where the heck that is in, in the mess of movies we have. It's somewhere. So got to dig that baby out. Another movie that I do, a movie I don't have, though, that I would really love to watch in its entirety that I have not seen since I was a little kid was the, uh, I think it was called Yogi's First Christmas, uh, you know, about Yogi Bear actually staying awake for Christmas and at the, you know, the Jellystone Lodge just having a big hullabaloo and stuff. I have not seen that since I was a little kid and... I would love to have that on DVD. Love to have it. And I, I think they got it on DVD. I've never seen it in a store, which, of course, uh, 
you know, the proper way to go about that is to look on Amazon for that stuff. But that's one of those things. Anytime, anytime I do have some extra money and uh, feel like, oh, I could get a movie or something like that. I never remember what the hell I've been wanting forever. Sean says, did you watch Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July? No, I haven't. I haven't watched it. Hold on one second. I'm going to go grab that set. I'll be right back. All right, coming back. Here we go. Um, that is, okay, you, you said that, and that stirred something up in my brain. Um, it is on this collection that we just got a few days ago. Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it, so uh, I'm going to have to watch it. I don't think I've seen it, though. I don't know if it's a cartoon or if it's stop motion. Have you have you watched it? But and see, it says this feature full feature length delight about what happens when a certain reindeer's nose stops shining. That's what it says on the back of this here. Um, I've never seen it. I look forward to seeing that. But uh, here's another one. I don't think I've seen this one either. A Miser Brothers Christmas. I don't think I've seen that one either. Uh, so I look forward to watching those. Hope they're not a big letdown. But uh, I'm going to check those babies out. Like I said, this was a good deal here. I mean, this... this uh, there's three discs, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight movies on here. That's good. Sean says, I do see Yogi's Christmas on the internet. Well, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing about that, Sean. There are two different Yogi Christmas movies, and I don't know... The one I'm looking for has, because I did have this Yogi, some kind of Yogi Christmas special on tape, but it wasn't the same one I'm, I, I'm talking about that I missed from being a kid. The one I'm talking about, there's this old hermit up in the mountains. He's kind of like a human Grinch guy, and he's trying to ruin shit at the lodge. I, I can, you know, I can't even remember what he's doing to try and ruin shit, but, um, crap, I can't remember what the hell the name of it is, but, uh, and, and like the owner of the lodge or whatever has a snotty ass, uh, nephew or something named, named Snively, and I remember so little about it because I was a kid when I saw it, so, but I remember, yeah, she had a, a nephew named Snively or something like that. He was a little brat. And him and this hermit got together, and I think they started pulling pranks on people and shit. Um, but I remember being a kid, and I swear they would show that. They'd have that thing on TV, and they'd, like, show it in parts. Like, they'd have one part of it one night, and next part another night I think that's how they used to broadcast that when I was a kid and see when I was a kid you know a younger kid especially um, you were at the mercy of the TV studios you were at the mercy of them if you wanted to see something um, if you didn't catch it on TV then then you weren't gonna watch it so before before videotape got big you know have some little, I don't know what this little plastic thing is. In a way, it looks like a doll shoe. In a way, it looks like something obscene. Looks like maybe, you know, Barbie doll strap on. 
That's terrible. I shouldn't say that, but it. Look at this thing. What the hell is it? And it looks. Looks obscene, doesn't it? I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. I don't know. That's terrible. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I think maybe it is supposed to be a shoe, but it, it does. It looks looks like something worse than that, you know. <laughs> I see. Sean says, "Was it Yogi's first Christmas?" That's what I'm trying to figure out. I can't remember if it's Yogi's first Christmas or not. Um. You know what? I'm gonna YouTube that shit, and even if I can't watch the whole the whole thing, maybe I can see like previews on YouTube just to find out which one of the Yogi Bear Christmas shows it is. I'm gonna have to do that. I'm gonna have to YouTube that thing, and I don't know what year it was made. Seventies, maybe. Maybe. I, I'm not sure. But uh, that's one that I'd like to see again. Another movie that I like, a Christmas movie that I really like, um, that I don't know if they've ever released it on DVD, but I think it was a made-for-TV special. It had Jacqueline Smith in it. She was a hot thing back in, back in the days. was The Night They Saved Christmas. I really liked that one. That was a good movie. Sean asks, was it Herman the Hermit? That sounds about right there. That sounds about right. He was wearing a coonskin hat or something, like Davy Crockett or something. Had a big gruff beard. Um, that sounds, that sound like it, Sean. Um, yeah. Uh, that, that is, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but that sounds familiar, dude. But uh, that was a good one. I just remember it being, I, I just remember really enjoying it when I was a kid. Really liked it, and, and I haven't seen it for ages. So and I've got this nostalgic pining inside of me to want to watch that movie. But uh, yeah, another one was, uh, I think it was called The Night They Saved Christmas. Okay. In this movie, I. I believe uh, it took place in Alaska or somewhere, and, and the North Pole was under threat, possibly blowing up or being destroyed or something by this oil company. And, uh, well, these people figure out how to save Christmas. I think that had Art Carney in it playing Santa Claus. I'm pretty sure that's the one with Art Carney playing Santa Claus. That was a good movie. I remember that one. Um, but I don't know if they ever put it out on DVD. I'm not sure. Um, you know, then there was a movie, in the, and I mean, they put a lot of money into this movie in the 80s. I remember it, but it just, I don't think it was that good. It was meant to be, it was supposed to be just... You know, they were planning on a, uh, this movie, uh, Santa Claus the movie. Okay, they made this movie. Uh, Sean says, yep, it was Yogi's first Christmas. The other one was Yogi Bear's all-star comedy Christmas caper. Okay, so it was Yogi's first Christmas. Thanks, thanks, Sean. Thanks a lot for looking that up, seriously. Um, Yogi's first Christmas. So is that on DVD? Do you know? I'm just wondering. But uh, Santa Claus the movie was made, I don't, hell, I don't know, 85, or I'm just guessing. Starred, uh, I think Jonathan Lithgow was in it, and Dudley Moore was an elf. And, you know, it was really hyped movie back in the days when I was a kid. And it didn't really deliver too well. Sean says, Yogi's First Christmas is on DVD. Wow. Nice. Nice. Wow. Maybe I 
I need to ask for that for Christmas. That could be on my Christmas I'd like to have list. Because I'm, I'm bad at that, you know. I'm bad at that. My wife will ask me, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm, I just draw blanks. Just like when I have a couple extra bucks. And it's like, okay, what the hell did I want? I can't remember. Once I have that money in my hand, I'm like, I can't remember what the hell I wanted. It's weird. But same thing when I go to the store, you know. That's why I have to make lists. I make lists of things because if I don't make a list, chances are I'm just going to forget it. I'm going to get to the store and forget all the supplies I needed for whatever. So, I don't know why my brain works like that or not. Um, but, yeah, if you ever get the chance to see The Night They Save Christmas, watch that too, because I, I thought that was a great movie. Um, you know, but then again, that could be one of those nostalgic things. Maybe, it, maybe I liked the movie because I saw it when I was a little kid. Sean says, uh, do you ever look in those $5 bins? Yes, I do. Yes, I look in those babies quite often. Quite often because uh, my taste in movies is, is different than a lot of, you know, usually I like things that are a little bit weird, a little bit different than, than I like things that aren't quite as popular. You know, with everybody else usually. So I find all kinds of goodies in those bins when I do look. Um, because the stuff I like is usually not what everybody else likes. So those bins are good for a guy like me. I found a lot of, a lot of cool Jackie Chan movies. Um, and when I say Jackie Chan movies, I mean, I mean non-Hollywood ones. I mean... One's made in Hong Kong and China. Found a lot of good Jackie Chan movies like that. You know, the Jackie Chan ones that are American-made movies are not hard to find. But some of the ones that were actually Chinese-made movies are harder to find on DVD if you're out looking in stores. But I found quite a few of those in those cheapo bins at the Walmart. And let's see. Did you get any of those cannibal films at Walmart? No. No, I did not. I, I don't think I've ever gotten a cannibal movie at Walmart. <sighs> well, you know what? It's possible maybe Green Inferno, which was an homage to the old cannibal movies of the 70s and 80s. Maybe I got that at Walmart. I'm not 100% certain where I got that. So that's possible that maybe I got that one there, but I did not get any of the other ones at Walmart. No way. No way. Um, let's see. There used to be a place called Media Play. It had awesome selection of uh, awesome selection of hard to find movies that got transferred to DVD. Media Play was great. I don't even. I don't. I don't think they're in business anymore. And Best Buy used to used to. And I'm talking way the hell back. Used to be a great place. To get hard to find weird kind of left to center movies it used to be a great place now they don't carry shit but best buy when they were a newer newer store and uh you know let's see sean says i think you can find bone tomahawk at walmart huh i do want to see that i want to see that does that have uh i can't remember dude uh, we talked about that one time. Does that have Kurt Russell in it? I was trying to remember that. Because I've only read about the movie. And I, you know, I do. I really want to see that movie. But, um, you know, that's another one. See, that's another one i got to keep in mind. And I, you know, being I'm a guy, you know, I'm... I'm a married guy with a lot of kids. I don't, um, you know, I don't have money to just Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. So, or else, that'd probably be what I'd do, you know. But I don't have money.
money that like that too often. So I don't buy movies like I used to. You know, when I was a lot younger, I had less less people to feed and and less bills. I used to buy a lot more movies, but um, man, Bone Tomahawk still got to see that. I still have to see it. Um, I'll see it. I will see it. But uh, who's that got in it? Does that have Kurt Russell in it, dude? And I can't look that up. Like, like uh, you know, I'm not like right by the computer where I can type this stuff in. And I can't type worth the shit either. Um, I've been trying to work with myself on learning how to type. You know, instead of just, what is it called, pecking? You know? I've been trying to teach myself how, how to type. And, and how I've been doing that is I look on Google, I look at the images and look up, you know, uh, what do I do? Look up keyboard. I'll look up keyboard and finger or something, and then it'll pop up and show, you know, which hand's supposed to be where. i got to keep telling myself to do that because I don't type that much. Okay, Sean saying it had Kurt Russell and Patrick Wilson. Of course I know who Kurt Russell is. Patrick Wilson, no clue. Don't know that dude at all. Kurt Russell, of course. Kurt Russell's been in, in a couple of my favorite flicks, actually. One of which being Big Trouble in Little China. Uh, the other one being The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, that, that oh gosh, that's a classic. Classic. But yeah, I've been, I've been trying to teach myself how to type. Sean, you know how to do that typing shit? You know how to type? You know, I know they're working. My kids are in schools, public schools, and, and they got these tech classes, you know, geek classes, where they got to mess with computers and shit. I don't know if they're all learning how to type, though. Never. I ask my kids about school all the time, but that's one question I have not asked them. Do they teach you how to type? Sean says, kind of, so you can kind of type. Okay, yeah, and I, I know, you know, the world's changing. I understand why these kids have more computer classes in tech or computer labs or whatever, but I wonder if they're teaching them that. I know they aren't, they are not teaching these kids how to write in cursive, which is weird, because, hell, I remember, I remember... <clears throat> we were at least doing cursive, at least by third grade. Okay, because I remember, um, I remember practicing my cursive in third grade. So, hell, I remember by fourth grade, I think fourth or fifth grade, we had calligraphy. Maybe that was fifth grade, took calligraphy in school. Yeah, I was up for some weird shit. Yeah, my parents would complain. Ah, we got to get you guys calligraphy pens. Calligraphy. Calligraphy pens. Yeah, calligraphy. And that was weird. That was like, you know, cursive on steroids. But that was school, man. That was school. Yeah, we had to learn calligraphy. And that was not some thing you chose to do. Another thing I had to do in school, which was kind of weird, uh, and, and I think it was unique to our school, too, because of the teachers for the fifth grade class that I had, square dancing. Yeah. I had to learn how to friggin' square dance. Let's see. Sean says, I don't even know what that is. <clears throat> well, calligraphy is okay you got a pen it's it's more like a marker and it's got like a chisel tip on it all right and just like cursive when i was a kid there were handbooks manuals okay that showed you exactly how every single letter was supposed to be wrote with calligraphy all right we had these with cursive we had these with calligraphy and the chisel tip had to be at 
the right angle or whatever when you were writing. I'm trying to remember this now. Oh my gosh, I haven't talked about calligraphy since I had to do the shit. Um, it has to be facing a certain way, and the strokes are very important how you do the actual strokes. So you're using like a, a chisel tip marker, I believe. That's a, got a fine chisel point on it. And there are certain ways you move the strokes. I'm trying to think of me writing the M in my name. And it's it's kind of like cursive, but it's it's weird. Google that shit, man. It's weird, but we had to learn it. We had to learn calligraphy. And you got to remember, I didn't see... I didn't see a computer in school until I was in junior high school. Okay. Up until junior high school, I never saw a computer in school. And... By the time I saw a computer actually in school, I was in junior high. They had one or two in one of the health classes. Okay. And uh, let's see. Sean says, can't wait for someone to hop on here and hear you say you got to do the strokes the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody take that out of context of me talking about stroking and getting and having to stroke in school too, you know, having to learn how to stroke it correctly in school. Yeah, that sounds great, doesn't it? My gosh. Well, um, yeah, well, you had to though. And, but yeah, and what the hell was I just talking about? Um. Yeah, calligraphy was weird, but we had to do it. I remember, you know, I, I wasn't the oldest, so I was kind of prepared for shit because my sister is three years older than me, so I, you know, had a lot of the same teachers and knew ahead of time the kind of shit we'd have to do, you know. Like, I knew already when I'd have to do the 50 states and the 50 capitals. I remember when I had to do that. <clears throat> Uh, already knew about it ahead of time. So, you know, my sister being the oldest, though, she's the one who had it shitty because everything was a surprise to her. But, you know, I already knew about it ahead of time. I knew about the calligraphy. I knew I'd end up being forced to square dance. Okay. And the square dancing. The square dancing was awesome for me because... Uh, the girl who absolutely hated me the most in school, out of all the girls, was my square dancing partner. Yeah, every, every time she was my square dance partner and she hated me. I, have, I would have to square dance with her. So that was a blast. Sean saying, at first I thought you said polygamy classes. I was like, huh? They made you take what classes in school? LOL. No, <laughs> not polygamy. No, no, calligraphy. Calligraphy, yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I only went to Maslin City School, so I don't know if that was... If that was something that all schools were, all public schools were teaching kids, you know, I don't know. And the square dancing thing, uh, I think that was unique to my school because my fifth grade teacher was a square dancing freak, a square dancing fanatic. Okay. I mean, this lady, that was her, that was her thing. I mean, she would go out and go square dancing on the weekends at a place called the Red Barn outside of Brewster. Still there. I think they're still in business. And a uh, big square dancing place. And she was my fifth grade teacher. So we had to learn square dancing. And, you know, 
like I said, that was that was so much fun because I was paired up with somebody who hated me for no reason, too. I didn't understand it. <clears throat> Shot says, yeah, they don't teach square dancing anymore. Well, like I said, I don't think it was a regular thing at schools. I think it was because this lady was obsessed with it, and she forced her students to take it. And we learned... Oh my gosh, all kinds of square dancing moves. And um, and at the end of the year, we'd have this big square dancing bash at the school and the gymnasium. And and I think back about it, you know, because when I was a kid, you know, you're a kid and you're forced to do all kinds of shit you don't want to do. And you're just like, oh, this, this is life. It's yet another thing that a grown-up's telling me to do that I don't want to do. So, um, but I look back at it now and I'm like, that is so damn weird. We had to square dance. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Maslin is not, you know, was not some thriving metropolis, but it's not exactly Hickville either. So I look back and I'm like, what the hell were they thinking? Teaching us square dancing, you know? What the hell does that have to do with school? Um, but we did. I mean, we did. We learned a lot of elaborate uh, dance, I don't know, configuration, whatever the hell you call that square dancing shit. But we learned all kinds of stuff. Um, it was different. It was different. But I, you know, I think that was unique to that teacher, I'm guessing, because she was a square dancing, a, a, uh, she was obsessed with it, so, so us kids got tortured by it, so, yeah, pretty weird. Now, my sixth grade teacher, he was cool, he loved music, all right, so we would sing in his class. All right, we would get printed out songs, okay, and we would have to sing these songs in class. The whole, whole class was expected to sing these songs. And they were from, uh, some of them were old songs, you know. There were oldies but goodies then, and some of them were contemporary songs, you know. Um, but I didn't mind that. I didn't mind that. And I think it also in fifth and sixth grade, we did a lot of poetry. Our teachers would print out these papers and we'd get new ones every day and put them in our uh, binder. We'd have these new poems. And I, I loved that because the poems that we mostly did were very humorous, funny, funny poems. A lot of them. Uh, some of them were, I guess, serious or whatever, but a lot of them were fun. So that was, that was enjoyable. You know, and I didn't mind singing, you know, because it wasn't just my ass up there in front of the classroom singing. That my, I might have had a problem with, but I, it wasn't like that at all. So I didn't mind that. But uh, so sixth grade, yeah, I had a really cool teacher. He was a cool guy. He's kind of like a grown up kid. Um, sixth grade teacher, yeah, Mr. Scholar. He was a big comic book fanatic. He loved comic books. And he'd tell us about his collection. I guess he had thousands of comic books. So so you already knew he was all right, you know. But he'd have us sing. And that wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, you know, I wonder if there's kids go to school and have, you know, weird teachers that make them, you know, participate in things that are like their pastimes at home, like, like my fifth grade teacher in the damn square dancing. I don't know. I don't know. Elementary though was a lot different than junior high. Oh my gosh. I, now you hear, I didn't mention fourth grade at all. Fourth grade was pretty shitty. Kind of horrible teacher for fourth grade. Horrible. Did not like her. But anyway, 
anyways, why the hell am I even, anyways, uh, no, square dancing, square dancing, calligraphy, cursive, all these things, gone, gone now, gone, there's probably some schools out there where kids gotta learn goofy shit like that, but, uh, you know, yeah, I just found out about that kids not learning cursive thing just a year or so ago. I just assumed they were being taught that. And then, you know, somebody started telling me about how nobody knows how to write cursive. And then I looked into it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, my kids can't write in cursive. And they get older, and they get these papers where they're supposed to sign their signature, and they don't know what the hell to do, you know? Sean says polygamy class, LOL. What was I thinking? I don't know. I don't know. Are you going Mormon or something on me here? I don't know. Polygamy class, jeez. Yeah. What's the weirdest shit you ever had to learn in school, Sean? Uh, square dancing was it for me. That was weird. That was weird and uncomfortable. That's the weirdest shit I had to learn. But, anyways, oh hell. Let's see, time is 1.35. It's about time I hop off of here. Got a late start today. Got a late ending today. But I still got stuff I got to do. So I'm going to have to hop off of here. Uh, thanks for watching. And... John, thanks for participating and hopping in the conversation. I'm going to hop off of here, get busy with the things that I really need to do. Let's see. Oh, wait. Sean says, did Angie have to do square dancing classes too? Yes, she did. She had the same teacher. So she had to do square dancing. So I had a heads up about that too. I knew about that. So... But like I said, when I was a kid, it didn't seem like anything weird because, you know, you spend, you know, you're what, 10, 11 years old or whatever. You've spent your whole life being told what to do anyways. So it didn't seem weird. Sean says, have a good day. God bless. My mom says, hi, Paul. Well, tell your mom I said, hi, Heather. And you have a good day and God bless you too. I'm going to hop off here and God willing, get some things done. All right, and I'll be on here tomorrow, and hopefully I'll be on time tomorrow. We'll see, but uh, I'll be on here tomorrow, noonish, ready to do some more wasted lunch. So whatever you do out there, be careful. Look out for your brothers and sisters, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.